And first at five, San Antonio police aren't saying how it was that a 15 year old teenager was critically wounded, allegedly by his 17 year old friend. The alleged shooter at first ran from the scene, but then came back soon after police arrived. However, at that point, the victim had already been rushed to University Hospital, and we do not have word yet on his condition. Jesse Degollado says the late morning shooting actually occurred at an apartment complex in the medical center area. This is the visibly distraught 17 year old young man who San Antonio police say allegedly shot his 15 year old friend in the head. The two were in the victim's bedroom at the Plaza de Ville on Eckert Road. The parents of the victim also were in the apartment. They reported that they heard a pop and then they heard the door slam. Leaving the weapon behind, police say the older teen had fled the scene only to return a short time later to surrender, breaking down in tears as he was taken into custody. I don't know how long they were friends for, but they were friends. Many questions yet to be answered. Among them, what led up to the shooting and where did the gun come from? Police say the victim's parents had no answers. They have no idea where this gun came from. They'd never seen it before. They didn't hear any argument or anything like that. They just heard the bang. Jesse De Guillado, KSAT 12 News. Do you know this person? Police say he is a local hip hop artist and he's wanted on charges of trafficking of a person. 32 year old William Bolden goes by the name Millie Mars. According to police, he was one of two people who sexually assaulted a woman at a northwest side apartment in September of 2019. The other suspect, 27 year old Ashanti Johnson, arrested earlier this month. Police accuse her of setting up the victim who they say is a relative. Johnson has since been released from jail. A San Antonio police officer now arrested for domestic violence. 33 year old Austin Wilkie was arrested early this morning at a home on the far northeast side. He's accused of pushing the victim to the floor during a fight. Wilkie is a three year veteran of the police department. He will remain on administrative leave during the investigation. Chief William McManus said today the allegations against Wilkie are inexcusable and will not be tolerated. He was shot in the neck, but managed to drive himself to a gas station for help. Police are still looking for that shooter. They say the man was shot around 1230 this morning at the edge apartments near I-10 in Commerce. The victim then drove about half a mile away to the 4000 block of East Houston. That's where he was found by emergency crews. He was taken to the hospital. He's expected to be OK. Police say the victim was not being cooperative. They did not release any information on any possible suspects. We have now learned the name of the person shot and killed on the west side this week. He's been identified as Kyle Gregory Warren. Police found the 30 year old on Wednesday night in the 8300 block of Calabra Road. He'd been shot in the chest and died at the hospital. Police are still looking for a man and a woman possibly tied to this shooting. Toyota Tacomas have been manufactured in San Antonio for the last two decades, but starting next year, that will be a thing of the past. Toyota shifting production of the Tacoma from San Antonio to Mexico beginning in 2021. Toyota made the announcement today. They say Tundras will still be manufactured here. And in 2022, Toyota plans to move production of the Toyota Sequoia SUV to the Alamo City. The company says no jobs will be lost as a result of this change. Oh, another great and damp day. Actually, some pretty good rainfall in parts of South Texas. This is just the kind of rain we like to get around here, and especially in because we are in such need of the rainfall. Here's a look at some of our weather watchers and their reports. Lakey over the past couple of days, two inches of rain. Meanwhile, Leon Springs, about 18 hundredths of an inch. Uh, Floresville right now at 68 degrees, and they haven't had as much rain southeast of town either. And looking at temperatures, there's a mixture out there because we have a boundary that's in place right now, and that makes it rather tricky temperature wise. So we'll take a look at that again in a moment. Wider view of the radar. It's rain really exiting the hill country. Heaviest of the activity, Gonzales and Lavaca counties, even a little bit here in Wilson and Carnes County. Closer look at all this. Talk about how a cold front will affect our weekend and much more coming up. Thanks, Adam. See you in just a bit. President Trump making a promise three years ago saying he would get more than 95 percent of the African-American vote for re-election. He set that goal back when he was first elected in 2016. But here we are nearly four years later. A recent nationwide poll now says that many want to limit the president to one term in office. Nadia Romero is in Washington with more on the voting bloc that could hold the key to the race for the White House. 
Well, Ursula, that poll you're referring to shows 80 percent of black voters say they want President Trump out in November. They overwhelmingly support Joe Biden, and he does have the most endorsements from the Congressional Black, black Caucus. But also remember, there's a progressive movement here. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are gaining momentum within the black community. While running for president in 2016, Donald Trump asked African Americans to pick him. What the hell do you have to lose? He also made this promise. And at the end of four years, I guarantee you that I will get over 95 percent of the African American vote, I promise you. Nearly four years later, a recent national poll shows about 90 percent of black Americans disapprove of the president's job performance. I think his whole platform is to divide mm -hmm. the country. As for black Democratic voters, that same poll shows Joe Biden with a double digit lead. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren round out the top three. Biden is the person I think that will pull in white voters, black voters, men, women, he's that candidate. In South Carolina, an early voting state with a large African-American population, Biden is on top, with billionaire Tom Steyer gaining traction. I like his environmental standpoints because I'm an environmentalist. As the Democratic field narrows and becomes less diverse, these voters say a candidate's color doesn't matter. We don't agree with you just because of the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. That's one thing America has to understand about the and black it's kind race. Of insulting you. Yeah. It's right. insulting. It really is because it's almost like you're saying we don't have our own ideas. Instead, the focus for many Democrats is electability. Everything means nothing if you don't win. For his part, the president seems undeterred by the numbers and continues to court the black vote. Trump! I think so. Trump! All right, so there is a divide within the black community when it comes to age. Young black voters support Bernie Sanders. The older generation, the generation of the civil rights movement, they support Joe Biden. And if you look at the polling, we know that black voters believe that policy issues are very important, but only second to beating Donald Trump. Live in Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Back to you. Good reporting. Thanks, Nadia. In new images giving a closer look at the damage caused at the Al-Assad Air Base in Baghdad following that missile strike from Iran. These photos were taken January 11th, two days after the attack. The airstrike was a response to the assassination of Iranian General Qassem Soleimani. It was initially reported no troops were hurt. The Department of Defense now says several troops were treated for concussions as a result of the blast. 11 service members currently being treated in Germany and Kuwait for worsening symptoms and signs of traumatic brain injuries. The United States complicated relationship with Iran discussed during a KSAT News live stream this afternoon. KSAT and Trinity University partnering for this discussion about everything from sanctions to assassinations to what the average Iranian thinks of the United States. Trinity Professor of International Relations Susan Siavoshi was the guest. She's written numerous books and articles on Iran and is herself an Iranian American. We also answered your questions that were submitted to the KSAT.com SAQ section. You can still see that discussion right now on our website. Right now in the capital of Virginia, there is a state of emergency in advance of an upcoming gun rights rally. The governor is saying intelligence from law enforcement agencies indicates hate groups have malicious plans. But as ABC's Trevor Ald explains, gun rights advocates say a weapons ban there is infringing on their right to bear arms. With tens of thousands expected for an upcoming Virginia gun rights rally, the city of Richmond bracing for potential violence. Governor Ralph Northam declaring a state of emergency in the capital city, saying law enforcement agencies had credible intelligence, armed militia groups have malicious plans. They're not coming to peacefully protest. They're coming to intimidate and to cause harm. Three men have already been arrested. Federal prosecutors saying they were part of a racially motivated violent extremist group called The Base, the English translation of Al Qaeda. The group is accused of using encrypted chat rooms to talk about recruiting people to create a white ethno state. Officials believe the three suspects were planning on attending Monday's rally in anticipation of a possible race war. Law enforcement agencies have added patrol officers in and out of the Capitol, and the governor has issued a temporary ban on weapons, meaning those pro-gun advocates won't be allowed to legally carry. 
It's, it's ironic that this is about gun rights and the governor is trying to take away our ability to carry guns. How, how, how ironic is that? Gun rights groups have legally challenged the governor's executive order, claiming it violates their Second Amendment rights. The state Supreme Court has yet to issue a ruling. Monday's rally comes in response to three new gun control bills, which recently passed in Virginia. And looming over all of these tensions, the shadow of what happened in 2017 in Charlottesville when a counter-protester was killed at a neo-Nazi rally. Trevor Ault, ABC News, New York. The United States Department of Agriculture has been slapped with a lawsuit from several states who are fighting new rules for food stamp recipients. Recipients who are working age adults without dependents or disabilities are now required to be employed to get benefits. But while states can waive that in high unemployment areas, there are now more limits. The states say that violates a federal statute. It's estimated about 688,000 people could lose their benefits. The USDA has not yet commented on the suit. Providing more flexibility for school meals, the USDA is proposing new guidelines for an Obama-era school lunch program. It's why USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue had lunch with students at Castle Hills Elementary today. The proposed change would broaden which fruits and vegetables are actually allowed on school lunch plates. The goal is to provide more foods that students are willing to eat, like potatoes, which will help avoid food waste. What we were having happen with the sodium requirements and the 100% the whole grain requirements were the palatability of the meals had caused a serious reduction in kids using them, either taking them or throwing them away and wasting in the trash can. The Secretary Purdue also commented on the changes for SNAP benefits. He says they will not affect students' eligibility for free or reduced lunch.